Good to see the children back. And little Macy over there. Hi, Macy. <laughs> so what a year it's been so far. 2020 will go down as, gosh, probably the strangest, most tumultuous, most divided year of these first couple of decades of the 21st century. Uh, it seemed we were going pretty strong in the first quarter, but then in March, the COVID-19 pandemic hit this side of the world, and it wouldn't be long before these unprecedented stay-at-home orders were issued around the country. And for over two months, many businesses were shut, churches closed, and we all hunkered down in our homes. People naturally gravitated to social media for contact with the outside world, our only contact with the outside world in many ways. And we at St. John even use the internet to continue some semblance of community life as uh, the body of Christ. Uh, but being online that much, we discovered just how divided our nation is, not just in its views about how to handle the pandemic, but when May 25th hit with the horrendous killing of George Floyd, we realized just how divided our nation is once again with regards to racial issues and what the best way forward is in overcoming the racial divide. And there are no words for seeing the video of a man who was being suffocated before our very eyes, even if it was that we were seeing it virtually. That injustice resulted in peaceful protests around the country, but also riots that destroyed some of our beloved cities. And we saw heart-wrenching videos of the people who lived in those destroyed city neighborhoods. Many of them were people of color who lived worked, and got their essential needs there. It was just earlier this week, this past Monday, that Jacksonians were concerned about what might, what might happen in our city as a result of the peaceful process against, protests against racism, with rumors of outsiders being brought in to cause havoc. You know, having heard what had happened in Grand Rapids, in Detroit, in Indianapolis, concerned citizens were sending me messages asking for prayers, which that's what prompted Father Brian, Riley, and myself to gather in prayer for anyone who wanted to join us online uh, to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet at the Mercy Hour, 3 o'clock on that Monday. And thank goodness that the peaceful protests were just that, peaceful. There, were no, there was no violence, there were no injuries or destruction, but instead it was a sign of solidarity with our black brothers and sisters. Some of our own parishioners uh, were present at them. See, one right now at least. And uh, in fact, Father Tim McDonald from Queens, just this is yesterday, Father Tim McDonald from Queens, uh, Riley and I joined Pastor Hines over at Lilly Missionary Baptist over uh, by Page Avenue for a prayerful protest in their outdoor parking lot and surrounding area. And Coach Herb Brogan was actually the opening speaker at that. And Father Tom Helfrick from St. Rita and Clark Lake said the closing prayer. And this protest was indeed peaceful. Uh, our bigger cities, not so lucky. Right? The violence in my home state of Missouri claimed the life of another black man. Uh, retired police captain from St. Louis, David Dorn, murdered by looters while Dorn was trying to protect the shop of his friend uh, from the rioting. You know, seeing all these events in the news, we realize once again what Martin Luther King Jr. emphasized all along, that violence is not the answer. As the Lord himself actually said, that he gets it from the Lord, returning evil for evil is not the answer. But what is the way forward in the fight against racism, injustice, and violence? How do we learn from all of this and move forward on the path of healing and of progress? Learning from this and learning from anything assumes something very obvious yet seemingly obvious because it seems to uh, go over a lot of our heads. 
That obvious thing about learning is that it assumes the virtue of humility. For learning to be possible, we need the virtue of humility. Right? That was the fall of humanity, right? The fall of pride. The, we need the humility of recognizing that none of us have all the answers. Only God does. Too many are all too sure that they know all they need to know about this or that. And it's that stubborn attitude that makes reconciliation and any moving forward in unity impossible. So to learn presumes a willingness to change, a willingness to repent, a willingness to listen and to grow from one's current understanding. As your pastor, I was concerned about how some of our black parishioners are doing during this time. And I wanted to listen and learn from their perspective and I'm thankful for their openness with what they're thinking, with their vulnerability, with how they are truly feeling at this time. So I wanna share with you one, what one of our parishioners shared with me, and I have permission to share it with you, because I think it's important for all of us to listen to our hurting brothers and sisters. And you may know or at least recognize Conroy Smith at Mass. In fact, uh, we got him coming up in an image, but because this is 10 o'clock Mass, which is the one he usually goes to, he's actually here. Uh, in, in, towards the back, he's usually from what I remember, at least, you know how everybody chooses their, their, their pews, but he's usually up here, closer, up front. But um, he, uh, he's one of the sharpest dressers in the parish, as you can see, right? Where is the Sunday best out of reverence for the Lord? Now, it may be difficult for uh, many of us to relate to some of Conroy's fears, but simply the fact that one of our brothers in Christ has these fears should cause us deep concern. And C. Roy had this to say, Father Chaz, I'm scared that my daughter will soon uh, experience her first ta real taste of racism because she is biracial. By the way, Michelle Woods, everybody knows our beloved Michelle Woods, uh, a staple fitness instructor, staple at, uh, at uh, the Y here in Jackson. And... Uh, very uh, longtime parishioner. She has the same concerns about her sons and grandchildren. But anyway, back to Conroy sharing, uh, who said this, I'm most scared of me dying by someone who thinks my skin color is a threat. I have fear when I leave my house. I'm home before it's too dark outside because I don't want my cell phone to be mistaken as a, a gun. My large stature scared an elderly lady, the elderly lady the other day in Meyer. Father Chaz, I'm a giant teddy bear. I can't hurt a soul. I can't say that these were never fears before, but now it's more heightened. I fear coming back to Mass. So glad you're here, Conroy. I fear coming back to Mass because of who's going to see me as an angry person and who's going to see me as a charity case? Neither one fits me. Should I stay quiet? Should I yell? Or should I cry? Who hears me? My community is supposed to have my back, but I feel it's divided. Did you hear C. Roy's question there? Who hears me? We all want to be heard. So I respond... To you, C. Roy, we hear you. We, fellow members of the body of Christ, hear you. Because friends, when someone is hesitant to come to church because of their skin color, we need to do better. So I encourage you, reach out and express your solidarity with your black friends. That's the first step that we can do to go forward. Right? Reach out and express your solidarity with your black friends. And the second step is to listen. Before you assume you know how they feel about all this, simply ask them. As your friend, is there anything you want me to understand about all that's going on? 
What's on your mind and heart during this time? And then listen, because not all black people feel the same way, feel the same way about all this. Summarize in your own words what you're hearing from them. And then tell them that you value their life, that their life matters. Yes, black lives matter. And I'm not talking about the political movement. It really sickens me how politicized a lot of these things are because it just increases the hate mongering. But it's good to say specifically that black lives matter because when one group is particularly hurting, responding with the obvious, all lives matter, can be hurtful. Right, let me offer an analogy that may help us better understand that. For us who support the respect and dignity of all human life and fight for the dignity of, of preborn children, if we say children in the womb matter, but every time we say that, people respond to us with the obvious children, all, children already born matter, and how a bunch of other groups of people matter. Such responses can come across as hurtful, and we can be tempted to think, you really don't think children in the womb really matter. The point of singling out a, sing a specific group of people during a given time is to recognize how they are undervalued, and perhaps the innate dignity as a human person is not fully recognized and respected. Right? Like, for example, if it's the time to honor veterans and we say how much their lives matter to us, how much we value them, and all they, then we come back and say, all lives matter during that time when we're supposed to recognize how taken for granted our veterans are, right? And in the wake of such a public act of injustice, this is such a moment for our black brothers and sisters. So let's heed St. Paul's words to the faith community in Rome, right? Paul said, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another. We heard that in the, the second reading, be at peace with one another, encourage one another. Do not be haughty, do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. Right now, people are trying to conquer evil with evil. And that's been tried ad nauseum throughout history. It doesn't work. Violence simply begets more violence. Instead, love one another as I have loved you, Jesus said. How did Jesus love? Just look on that cross. Imagine if the human family loved one another like that. Jesus is the one who conquered evil with good. Because human beings are made in the image and likeness of God, Jesus reveals to us what it means to be human. What it means for you to be you and me to be me. That image and likeness of God in humanity has been so disfigured by sin and the horrible ways we treat one another that God had to become one of us in Jesus to show us what it means to be us again and how to be human to each other again. So imagine if we simply lived out what God created us to be as human beings, made in the image and likeness of a God who is love. And believe it or not, the, the solemnity we celebrate today, the mystery of the most holy trinity, reveals us to us. Because we are made in the image and likeness of a God who is a relationship of persons. Love necessarily entails more than one person. Love always entails three realities, the lover, the beloved, and the, the love that they share with each other. So if God is not just loving, but God is love itself, then God necessarily in his oneness is a relationship of persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you and I are made in the image and likeness of such a God. In other words, when we look at who we are created to be, we see that we are inherently relational. 
Our life doesn't make sense unless we are in relationship with others, other people. And of course, the evil one is going to try to destroy that and divide. Because if we're not in relationship with other people, we die, right? And the, and the basis or foundation of that relationship with others is self-giving love. That's what the Trinity teaches us. We were made for self-giving love. And our eternal destiny is to enter into and share in that eternal exchange of love that is God. That's the invitation God gives us on the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. And the answer, our RSVP, if you will, to that invitation is how we love God and how we love our neighbor here and now. How we will, how we will the good of the other. Humanity has forgotten who we are and from where we came. From a God who is pure love. That's why religious freedom is so important, right? The forces of destruction in this world would try to ensure we don't remember where we came from, which is why the eradication of God from society is simply evil and a ticket to hell on earth. I'm starting to see that some of that already. Until we return to him and his ways of love, we will never find the answer to how to move forward together in unity, which is the central truth of the Trinity, whereby three distinct persons don't hate each other, but come together in love as one. Our first reading was about Moses' encounter with God, and the Lord would lay it out to him pretty clearly. In a, in a later passage, passage, he told Moses, See, I have today set before you life and death. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, loving the Lord your God, and walking in his ways, you will live and grow numerous, and the Lord will bless you. If, however, your heart turns away and you do not obey, but are led astray and bow down to other gods and serve them, I tell you today you will certainly perish. It's not that he wants us to perish, obviously, because we just heard in the gospel, God sent his only begotten son, into, beloved son into the world. What? So that the world might perish? No. So that the world would not perish, but might have, everyone who believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. He didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but to save it. And so God finished uh, concluded this passage with Moses, I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life then, that you and your descendants may live. In these recent times, the human family has chosen death. And so church, let's be a shining example of returning to God, choosing life, so that we might be a light in the darkness that, that humanity may see and know that salvation is possible, that a better way is possible. Because if we can't do that with us amongst ourselves as a microcosm of the world, of the change that we want in the world, how do we expect the world to change? So let's live with each other with the justice and peace that we desire in the world. Even should death be all around us, we will choose life.